Praise the Lord, saints. Welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the homeless and the poor here in Montgomery, Alabama. Pastor and founder, Vince Rosado. My name is Minister Warren Rudd, and today we're going to be talking about a subject that most people don't like to talk about or they're fearing of. You know, and that subject is going to be death. You know, we are, have been experiencing a lot of deaths here at Friendship Mission Church. You know, a lot of brothers have been dying, whether it be of sin, illness, or just bluntly suicide. So today we're going to look at what the scriptures may say about a saint who dies versus a sinner who dies. You know, we all fear death. I think about death. Everybody thinks about death. But do you know where you're going to be when you die? And what God thinks about you when you die versus a saint or even versus a sinner. You know, God even says precious in his sight is the death of his saints. But Jesus also said, depart from me. I never knew you if you had not stood with them all the way and fought the good fight of faith. So today, grab your Bible, grab your paper, and grab your pencils, and get ready for a mighty word from God. And as I always say, there you go, right there. Mm-hmm. God bless. Anyway, come on, y'all. Let's get started. Everybody got Bibles? Sorry. All right. Remember, don't cross the camera. Be, be respectful and walk on each side of the YouTube, okay? So let's all stand for prayer. All right. Let's all stand for prayer. Father, we just thank you the mighty name of Jesus for this word. This is my way to come forth. Father, we
to a certain degree, I wonder. But the last thing you want is your children to hate you, your wife to hate you, your children to hate you, because of the sin that you're in. You don't want to live no more. It's depression and the Satan grabs you right at that point. He knows he got you. Mm -hmm. But if God didn't let that step be in, I wouldn't be here today. That's right. And that's a horrible way to go, dude. Amen. It is painful. Amen. You know, people talk about your neck get broke. No, that's when you go through a trap door. But if you don't go through a trap door, sure. it's, it's a suffocating. Yes. I don't even know how some people can do it. But, but when God says about his word concerning the saints in Psalms 116, verse 15, I fell in love with this verse. Uh, 116, 15. <clears throat> precious, in the sight, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Mm. Ain't that something? Precious are you when you die in God. God says how precious you are when you die, when you're in me, in his sight. That means you done fulfilled your assignment, you done did what he told you to do, and you done fought the good fight, not perfectly. It don't mean you, you were sinless. David wasn't sinless, was he? He never. Paul sure enough wasn't sinless. He killed more Christians than a little bit. Yes. Most of the mightiest people in the Bible did some atrocious things, but precious in the oh. sight of the Lord was the death of the saints. Amen? Amen? But we have a God that did it for us because he knew that our sins, past, present, and future, we would never be able to keep the law. We would never be perfect. So he sent his only begotten son who will do this wonderful thing for us. So let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Every time I teach a Bible class or teach people how to use the straws and the vines, I always use this verse to make them search it out. This will be their homework assignment. To find out this word. Right? So I love it. Second Corinthians, I mean Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 10. Second Timothy 1 10 says, But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death. Underline that. He has abolished death. Amen. And has brought life and immortality to the light through the what? Gospel. What does he mean by he abolished death? I think, uh, you know, I used to make rhymes and those no more assignments. Say, put that word abolish. Find out what it really means. And it means vanish away. Make it fail. Make it utterly useless. Death has no more use. That's what you do. Death has no more use. It's useless now. Because he did it for you. Amen. You know, we fear death because we are a natural man and nobody really wants to die and suffer. Or if you're really suffering, you just want to get it over with. Yes. But I tell you, I don't want to burn in hell. No. I'd rather die and be in the Lord than die and go to hell any day. Amen? Amen. But he made it useless. Yes. That's why Paul even said, you know, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. He said, I'm either betwixt whether to stay here on earth or be in heaven with Jesus. You know, sometimes you can feel the love of God so mighty that you just want to be with him. Or sometimes that love is so overwhelming. And the way I look at it, because I never had nobody love me like God. Amen. I can't even understand how God can love me. I really can't. Right. Because, I mean, I'm not worth that kind of love. Right. But yet he does it anyway. He does it for you. He does it for me. It's awesome. Sometimes it can be overwhelming. Especially if you're dealing with issues and addictions and stuff like that. You know, and I hate to keep using Mike just because Mike recently died, but Mike asked God for all these things. We used to talk about the blessing of the Lord. We used to talk about the Bible and the things he wanted, and he got everything he asked for because he was serving the Lord. Yes. You know, he wanted a house. He got that. He wanted a wife. He found a wife. He wanted a baby. He thought he couldn't have none. He got a baby. Now, all these things he was getting, but yet it was still overwhelming him. Yes. God's love can be so overwhelming that it can kill you or make you dead. But it's a shame if it kills you because you don't think you deserve it. You do deserve it. You deserve God's love. Right. Well, he would have never sent his son to do this for you. That's the ultimate sacrifice. But we take it so for granted because we don't understand God's love. Amen? Amen. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And this is what else Jesus is going to do for you when you die as a saint. 1 Thessalonians, that's just before Timothy, mm -hmm. chapter 4. Look at verse, starting at verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brothers, concerning them that are asleep. Now that word asleep means dead. Yeah. I don't want you ignorant about people who are dead. 
that you sorrow not. Don't be mourning. It's, it's wonderful that we cry and we because we're human. But he said, if they're in Christ and they're a saint, don't sorrow too long. Why? If they're with me. Amen. Amen. And he don't even say that there. He said they're asleep. Yes. Right? Let's keep reading. He said, don't sorrow not even as others which have no what? Hope. Yeah. That word hope in the Greek means confident expectation. What's the confident expectation? That they're going to be with Jesus in heaven. Right. Are you confident expecting to go to heaven? Amen. All right then. So don't sorrow too long. Amen. Amen. Verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which are sleeping in Jesus, will God bring with him? That's right. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them that are dead or asleep. That's right. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with a trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall what? Wow. Rise first. first. Come on now. Verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Now that's the word rapture. Yes. Okay. We which are alive first, the dead going to rise to meet him. Then we who are still alive, if when he returns, we're going to meet him too. Shall be caught up together where? With them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Now, I love this last verse. Wherefore, that means coming. That means concerning everything you just read. Every time you see wherefore, therefore in the Bible, it means concerning everything you just read. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So if you're a saint, I need to comfort you to say, don't worry. They with the Lord. And I tell you, once you get with the Lord, you don't want to come back. I don't know nobody who ever went to heaven who want to come back. You know, there's books about people who went to hell and came back and talked about it. There's people who saw this blue light or great light. I still question that stuff in my head sometimes. Because I realize that if you ever see heaven, why in the world would you want to come back? I don't think I want to come back. Amen. But this is the kind of stuff we need to comfort one another. If you're saints, if you're born again, this is what you're going to get. Amen? You're going to be with Jesus forevermore. Amen. Go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. That shouldn't be a scary thing because we all got to face it. Every single body in this room will have to face it one day. Now, how you face it is another thing. You know, if you're going to face it through sickness, drug addiction, alcoholism, you know, fornication, because sex will lead you to, you know, diseases have uh, um, escalated and escalated. Flesh eating stuff nowadays. AIDS, HIV you got stuff out here now. When I was a kid, we even heard of it. And I'm sure in biblical day they didn't really happen. You know what I mean? So all kinds of things will kill you today. But who are you going to die in? Are you going to die in Jesus or are you going to die in yourself? Amen? Amen. Romans chapter 6, look at verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? The grace may abound? God forbid. Well, I'm saying, no way. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, so even so shall we also shall walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Amen. Verse 6. Knowing this, that the old man, hello, yes. that the old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Amen. You should be serving sin. That don't mean you don't make a mistake. That don't mean you don't have a little fault here and there. Serving sin means that's what you live for every day. You wake up thinking about it. You go to sleep thinking about it. All in between you're thinking about it. Amen. It's called crack. Uh -huh. Can't find the next hit. You know? That's the way I think. Amen. Amen. Verse 7. For he that is dead is free from sin. That means kill that old man. Yeah. Verse 8. Now, if we be dead with Christ, 
we believe that we shall also live with him. Amen. Verse 9, underline verse 9. Yes. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more. He dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. Amen. If he got no more dominion over him, it has no more dominion over you. Yes. If you're in Christ Jesus. Amen. Verse 10. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. Yes. But in that he lived, he lived unto God. Amen. So you die to yourself and begin to live unto God. Amen. 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 Now, ain't that glorious about what saints are going to get when they live under Christ? Amen. Wow. Precious are you in the sight of God? You're going to meet him in the air no matter what day or minute. Even if you're burning in the ashes, don't you know them ashes are going to come together as a body and a twinkle in your eye and you want to meet him? I could throw one half of your body clear across the country and when Jesus showed up in the twinkle, it's going to come back together. That's how awesome it is. That's how awesome it is. But if you're not in him, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. I'm going to ride some of you for a minute. Y'all know me. Been around. Come on now. Come on now. 